What we are about is finding a policy worthy of our young men and women and their families who go off to fight and die in a very difficult war. That, Madam President, is what we owe our troops. That, Madam President, is what we owe this country. That, Madam President, is what we owe the world. It surely is not, cannot be, a weakness for America, as seen in the eyes of the world, to openly debate the most critically important issue that any of us will ever debate, and that's war. That's the strength of America, not the weakness of America. Why America has prospered for over 200 years is because the world has had confidence not in its power, trusted not its power, but trusted America's purpose. Madam President, in 1968, when I served uh, with my brother and many others in Vietnam, I believe, I speak for most who were there then, and I've heard from a lot of Vietnam veterans about this debate, but I believe in 1968, the troops, the ones at the bottom doing the fighting, doing the dying, would have welcomed the Congress of the United States into a debate about Vietnam. They would have welcomed somebody paying attention rather than just going along. No, Madam President, this is a strength of this country. And surely we have clear constitutional responsibilities. How could anyone argue differently? Clear constitutional responsibilities here. I heard uh, my distinguished colleague from Connecticut talking about non-binding resolutions. I don't doubt uh, his staff's research on this, but uh, I will remind the senator that over the last 12 years, there have been a number of non-binding resolutions debated on this floor, on Bosnia, Kosovo, Somalia, Haiti, and others. And I would remind some of my colleagues who uh, do not believe it's in the interest of our country or our troops to talk about non-binding resolutions, paper mache resolutions, senseless resolutions, that they actually voted for some of those resolutions over the last 12 years. And I'd be very happy to provide for the record a list of how everyone in this chamber voted over the last 12 years if they were here on those resolutions. And it might be very interesting and enlightening. Surely it is not because one political party controls the White House and the other doesn't. Surely it cannot be that. National Intelligence Estimate. Summary, unclassified portion made public on Friday. Now, Madam President, those watching should have a clear understanding of what that document is. Who produced that document? That document is an accumulation of the 16 intelligence agencies of this country. None that I'm aware of has had the integrity of that institution that they represent, any of those 16, ever impugned. Questions about quality of research, maybe, and other facets of intelligence, but none the integrity of the intent of the product. The national intelligence estimates say that we are involved today and have been in Iraq in not just a sectarian conflict, a violent, vicious sectarian conflict, but an intra-sectarian conflict. Is it not time, Madam President, does not our troops and the American people expect 
the Congress, after four years, when things have gotten progressively worse, not better, to engage? And is it not our responsibility, Madam President, to address this issue, the issue of escalating our military involvement, putting American troops in the middle of a sectarian, interest sectarian war? Is that not our responsibility? Of course it's our responsibility. Madam President, I will have more to say as the debate goes forward this week. And as I noted, I have every confidence in our two leaders that they will work out. They will work out a resolution where we will have this debate uh, because it is clearly in the interest of our country. It is clearly in the interest uh, of our troops. And with that, uh, Madam President, I would uh, yield back my time and yield the floor. Thank Madam you. President, before the Senator yields, I'd like to associate myself with your remarks. And I, too, have confidence in our leadership being able to work this out. And accordingly, no matter how strongly I feel about uh, my resolution, I shall vote with our distinguished leader on this issue in hopes that it can reconcile the differences.